In today's Gospel, our Savior asks Peter three times, Do you love me? And Peter answers, Yes, three times, grieved that the Lord has repeated his question. Each time the Lord commands Peter to feed the Lord's sheep. Then Peter tells him, Follow me. Peter's threefold confession of love for Christ is a threefold reparation for his earlier denial of Christ during his passion. Christ chose a penitent, Simon Peter, to confirm the brethren and to feed the Lord's flock, and to pardon his brethren even seventy times seven times. When the high priest accused the apostles of seeking to bring Jesus' blood upon them, the high priest spoke more truly than he realized. Peter was proclaiming in Jerusalem itself the power of our Lord's cross as atonement and salvation. And Peter did indeed wish for the precious blood of Jesus to descend upon the high priest and all Israel and the Gentiles too as redemption and cleansing. Peter had himself been forgiven much and loved Christ all the more. So Peter proclaimed that Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection took place to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Confession is essential to repentance. In the Bible, confession of sin is the open acknowledgement of sin before both God and man. The book of Leviticus says that when a man is guilty of any of these, he shall confess the sin he has committed, and he shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord for the sin which he has committed. The Old Testament penitent would bring his offering for for sacrifice to the priest at the door of the tabernacle. Then the penitent would lay his hands on the animal that was to be sacrificed and confess his sin in the hearing of the priest. The sacrifice would then be offered, and the pardoned sinner sprinkled with the sacrificial blood. In this way, the priest was to make atonement, or to make reconciliation, for the sin before God. When King David committed adultery with Bathsheba, and brought about the death of her husband Uriah, he was called to repentance by the prophet Nathan. David then confessed his sin and begged pardon. And Nathan then said, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. God declares forgiveness through a human minister, in this case the prophet Nathan. Only once in the Bible do we hear of confession of sin made made solely to God in personal private prayer. That was by the prophet Daniel, when he confessed before God the sins of his nation that had brought about their exile to Babylon. Daniel prayed alone and in exile, but he did so on behalf of himself and of his nation at a time when he had no access to the temple saying, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel's act of contrition and penance is still oriented toward the temple and its priesthood. His confession involved all of God's holy people. After the return from Babylon, the priest Ezra who called the Jews to repentance and to restore the temple, said this, Now then, make confession to the Lord, the God of your fathers, and do his will. Then all the assembly answered with a loud voice, It is so. We must do as you have said. All this is said aloud in a communal setting. This tells us that according to the Bible, under normal conditions, And when possible, confession is made before God in the midst of the holy community of God's people and with a priest present. In the New Testament, we see the same pattern. John the Baptist, who was a priest of the Old Covenant as well as a prophet, like Nathan, 
was baptizing the Jordan. The penitents were confessing their sins. They must have been speaking aloud so that John could hear them. John the Baptist was, so to speak, hearing confessions as part of his baptismal ministry. Christ our Redeemer gave to his apostles the priestly power of binding and loosing, which includes absolution from the guilt of sin. The risen Christ declared to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The bishops and priests continue the apostolic mission by hearing confessions and giving absolution. St. Paul speaks of his apostolic authority to pardon sins in the presence, literally in the person, of Christ. As St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We beseech you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that there were believing Christians who had sinned by practicing magic and occult practices, and that they confessed those sins before the apostles. St. James says, Confess your sins to one another, in connection with the anointing of the sick, which is administered by the priests. To priests especially are addressed St. Paul's words in Galatians, Brethren, If a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Look to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Confession is indeed deeply personal. St. Paul writes to the Galatians that each man will have to bear his own load. That is, each will have to examine his own conscience and repent of his sins in a personal way. Confession also involves the entire body of Christ, for the Apostle also says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We repent and confess personally within a company of penitents, walking together the way of ongoing conversion in Christ. Many people find this hard to accept, Some people are religious individualists and resent any churchly or priestly role in the forgiveness of sins. Others think of Christian repentance as social reform and institutional change, or even as political revolution. That is false. The fundamental problem is the sinful human heart, not unjust social structures. As St. John says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen come to mind. Christianity does not begin by reforming society. It begins by regenerating men. A better social and international order begins within each one of us, with these humble words on our lips. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned.